Harry, uh, the first topic is uh, ileostomy or the ulcerative, ulcerative colitis surgery. You know. Now, ulcerative colitis uh, is a chronic or the long-term inflammatory disease, and uh, it affects the lining of the large intestine or colon or rectum. You know. And the rectum is the last section of the colon and uh, is located just above the anus. You know. And the people with ulcerative colitis have uh, tiny ulcers or abscesses in their colon and rectum. And uh, these flare up uh, periodically and cause uh, uh, bloody stools and diarrhea. And ulcerative colitis may also cause severe abdominal pain, anemia. Now, anemia is marked uh, by the low levels of healthy red blood cells. Ulcerative colitis has uh, alternating periods of flare-ups and remission, you know. And uh, during remission, the disease seems to have disappeared. And the periods of the remission can last from weeks to years. Now, the inflammation usually begins in the rectum. And uh, it then spreads to other segments of the colon, you know. And how much of uh, the colon is affected varies from person to person. And if the inflammation is uh, limited to the rectum, the disease is called ulcerative uh, uh, proctitis. Uh, the next thing is how is uh, ulcerative, uh, ulcerative colitis uh, diagnosed? You know. Now, it uh, closely resembles with the Crohn's disease, and the Crohn's disease. Uh, is another inflammatory bowel disease, you know. Often the only thing that uh, distinguishes ulcerative colitis is that uh, it affects only the colon, you know. And uh, Crohn's may affect any part of the digestive system, including the mouth, you know. Now, the Crohn's disease uh, also is a primary destructive to the small intestine known as the ileum. You know? Now, your doctor may order several different types of the tests uh, uh, when considering the ulcerative colitis as a diagnosis, you know. And uh, these include like um, uh, blood tests or the stool sample tests, imaging tests such as a CT scan or MRI, you know, and colonoscopy, and sigmoidoscopy or uh, and pill camera, you know. So these are the multiple tests uh, used to, uh, to diagnose the ulcerative colitis. Uh, the next thing is uh, once diagnosed, uh, how common is it? You know? Well, about 25 to 40 percent of the people with ulcerative colitis will have to have surgery to remove their colons. And the reasons that uh, surgery becomes necessary uh, include like uh, medical treatment for instance, when drug therapy fails to provide the results, you know. And uh, uh, there may be a risk of uh, cancer uh, without surgery. And uh, the colon has ruptured, you know, and the patient experiences a severe sudden onset of the disease. And uh, there is extensive bleeding and the treatment uh, causes side effects uh, severe enough to compromise the patient's health, you know. Uh, the toxic uh, megacolon has set in, you know. Uh, in this dangerous condition, the muscles of the large intestine are dilated and the colon can rupture. You know. And in some cases, the surgery to remove the colon is recommended if other treatments do not work or if the side effects of the medications are harming the patient, you know. Uh, now, once diagnosed, then uh, what kind of a procedures or what kind of a surgery is performed, you know. The surgery to remove the entire colon is called colo uh, uh, colectomy, you know. And the surgery to remove the both, the colon and the rectum is called uh, proctocolectomy. Now the both can be used to treat the ulcerative colitis. And uh, these procedures are also performed to eliminate the threat of uh, colon cancer. Uh, which is common in the people with the ulcerative colitis. Now, proctocolectomy is considered the standard treatment when the surgery of the 
ulcerative colitis is needed. And if the entire colon is removed, the surgery may be create opening or the stoma in the abdominal wall, you know. And the tip of the lower uh, small intestine is brought uh, through the stoma. An external bag uh, is attached to the stoma, you know. And this is called the permanent uh, elostomy. And the stools pass through this opening and collect in the pouch. And the pouch must be worn all the time, you know. And another procedure is the pelvic pouch or the iliac pouch or the anal uh, uh, anastomosis, you know. And this is uh, a procedure uh, that does not require a permanent stroma. And the surgery is also called uh, restorative uh, proctocolectomy. And the patient is still able to eliminate stool through the anus. And uh, if this procedure uh, performed, you know, then the colon and the rectum, uh, rectum are removed, you know. And uh, then the small intestine is used to form an internal pouch or the reservoir, uh, which is also known as the J pouch, you know. And that will serve as the new rectum. And uh, this pouch is uh, uh, connected to the anus. Now, the procedure is frequently done uh, in two operations. Uh, in between the operations, the patient needs uh, a temporary elastomy. And the continent elastomy or the knock pouch is an option for the people who would like their elastomy converted into an abdominal pouch, you know. And if, uh, well, it's also an option for the people who do not qualify for the uh, IPA procedure, you know. Uh, in this procedure, there is a stoma but no bag. And the colon and the rectum are removed and the internal reservoir is created from the small intestine. An opening is made in the abdominal wall and the reservoir is then joined to the skin with a nipple valve. To drain the pouch, the patient inserts a catheter through the valve into the abdominal, into the internal reservoir, you know, and this procedure is not the performed surgical treatment for the ulcerative colitis patients, you know. And that's because of its uncertain results and potential need for additional surgeries, you know. Uh, the next thing is what are the uh, benefits of the ulcerative colitis surgeries? Well, if the entire colon is removed, the ulcerative colitis is cured. And uh, this should put an end to the diarrhea, abdominal pains, anemia and other symptoms. And in addition, surgical procedures prevent colon cancer. You know? And overall, an estimated 5% of the ulcerative colitis patients will develop cancer. And uh, the elimination of the colon cancer threat is especially significant for the people who have the ulcerative colitis that affects the entire colon, you know. And uh, in these cases, uh, as opposed to the cases of ulcerative colitis that affects only the lower colon and the rectum, you know, the cancer risk without surgery could be up to 32 times uh, the normal rate, you know. Uh, the next thing is, these are the benefits, you know. What are the complications? Well, the complications from the ileo and you know, uh, uh, Anastoma, uh, anastomosis, you know, may include like uh, uh, more frequent and more watery bowel movements, you know, and inflammation of the pouch and uh, blockage of the intestines, which is known as bowel in, uh, 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 obstruction, you know, uh, or the adhesions, you know, which are caused by the surgery and pouch failure which happens about in 8 to 10 percent of the patients with the, this procedure you know and if the pouch fails the patient will need to have permanent uh, ileostomy thank you very much for watching this video if you need more information about any disease or medical condition you can visit our website www.diseasesandtreatment.com and please do not forget to subscribe to this channel for more informative videos every day thank you and goodbye